So this was another interesting adventure, well, part of our adventure. After we escaped from the cannibal town, we were able to make pretty good uh, distance, at least, uh, away from the danger uh, before Sauter said that he wanted to stop. He got incredibly injured in the fight, and so uh, I signaled to Ned to stop the the carriage for a little while, even though he was really hesitant to do so. Not that I really blame him, since we were really trying to keep on a timetable and escaping from a village of crazy people that we just murdered. At that point, uh, there was Sodder was very injured and he needed to be healed. I mean, you could say, I'm, I'm not throwing it out there, but I felt like uh, I was maybe down to two HP, whatever that means. I asked Kles if she would heal Sodder's wounds. Um, and so she went over and did that, and they had a little whispery conversation between themselves, which I was like, okay. Uh. We stopped for a couple of minutes so I could explain to the group what exactly was going on, and I told them about the shiny metal-y thingy that I saw, and I didn't really get a good look at, though. And they kind of took that, and, um... What I did was I went and I checked another one of the barrels in the back while we were pulled over to the side. Um, and I didn't find anything. So Kles, in her righteousness, wanted to check every single crate. And we were like, no, you can't do that right now because we're on a timetable and, and Ned and Myra are gonna get suspicious. We were in the wagon and we were heading to the city of Corvin. Uh, by 10 o'clock, I would say, or 11, we had finally gone to Corvin. Uh, Eddard went up to the gate, talked to the guards. We were questioned by guards because obviously we're trying to get into this town at like 11 at night and of course the gates are already shut and so they come out and um, they bring a, I think five soldiers with them but we try to figure out what's up. And then I kind of explained to the guards that we may be transporting more than what we had first thought we had. I don't think they found anything. I mean, anything out of the ordinary. I didn't find anything out of the ordinary, but then they let us go in on our way. We decided at that point to split off a little bit. Sauter and Myra were going to go find us rooms at the local inn. I was able to play some pretty sweet jams on my flute, which got us a discount for the rooms. And then we spent the night just kind of drinking. It was a good night. Myself, Kles, Ura, and Ned were going to see if we could find the buyer to try and get all this figured out as soon as possible so we could just get out. We ended up not finding him because he finally admitted defeat after searching around for a while. He's like, well, I actually don't know who we're looking for. I, I mean, Olin was the guy who knew, but he's dead and we may have eaten him. Let's head back to the inn. In the morning, we can go out and look somewhere. So, of course, that's what we did. Uh, we shot our own bed, which was kind of nice. When we woke up, Miro was nowhere to be seen. But it was, I don't know, kind of threw us all for a loop. It, you know, everyone kind of got back to the room safe. I don't really remember what happened. I just remember waking up. Everyone was in their room. Apparently, I was in my room shirtless, which I swear nothing happened that I know of. I hung out at the inn for a while and everyone else went out to maybe, like, I think some a uh, couple people went to look for Mira and Ura went to go get some fancy weapon. Uh, just ate some rations and went over to the sword place. Got me a pretty nice sword. Don't know what I'm gonna. Uh, don't know what I'm gonna name it. It's gonna be pretty good. It's probably gonna be vulgar. So Sauter and I had an awkward breakfast journey to a really awkwardly named restaurant that I can't remember the name of right now. So we rode off. We actually got a lot of weird looks when we went to this provocative restaurant, and. We, uh, or I felt really uneasy, so we got our food and left. 
On our way back, ran into this really nice little orphan kid. I don't know if he was an orphan, but he might have been a kid. I don't know. So I, he begged for food, I gave him a chicken leg, because we ordered to go, figured that was best. And then I went off the way. Uh, after we came back, uh, Kles had stayed in the inn to watch for Myra, but she hadn't come back the entire time. Sauter and I had been out eating, we brought Kles back some food, and Ura had been shopping, or whatever it is that he does, and Ned was out watching the cart, and we hadn't seen Myra yet, which we were getting a little bit weird, wary, but we figured that we needed to continue on to find the buyer. Um, this guy is supposed to have really dark black hair, almost purple hair, and a bright green shirt. I, I think it was bright, but he had big sideburns, and um, Edward ended up finding him, and so we found him, and we're like, hey, we have your stuff, and he's like, cool! So we went back to this little storage warehouse, something or other, and we started unloading the barrels, and he was a bit frustrated that Olin wasn't with us and that one of the barrels was missing. Gonna get, we were each gonna get 200 gold pieces for each of us. Of course, Kales had to throw the damn barrel out. That was a little bit frustrating for Ned. So our pay got docked a little bit because of that, but eventually they worked out an agreement. Um, the buyer had his men come take the apples from the cart into their warehouse, and Ned came out with a big old sack of gold for us, and we were almost excited, but then we heard the trusty police force in the town come, yay. It turns out it was a setup, and that's, I don't know, guards rushed in and arrested everyone. I was really compliant because I had done nothing wrong, and I wanted to hopefully be like, hey, I was the guy that tipped you guys off because I was like, hey, we have more than just apples in our merchandise. And we're just like, what's going on? We didn't do anything wrong. Like, I, I don't know what's going on here. And then they're like, well, you guys are under arrest. Wish I had done something, but too many. Anyways, everyone else wouldn't have done anything. But dropped our weapons knowing we're not guilty. We didn't purposely transport illegal goods. We were supposedly smuggling things into the city. Which, honestly, I definitely did not know we were doing that. I, I just thought that somebody really liked apples. I don't, I don't know, I didn't ask any questions. Why should I have asked questions? Then they tried to chase after the people, go into the warehouse. They're gone already. Big surprise. So, we get transported back to their police dungeon. And interrogated individually, which was very frustrating for me, by a really condescending elf and orc, who honestly I just wanted to punch both of their faces in, make them eat their own tongues. Yeah, we ended up getting questioned and they weren't really, they, they didn't really like our stories. They're like, this, this doesn't sound very realistic. We ended up being, like I said, interrogated. So they got the entire story, and then we actually were able to talk to the prison leader guy. His name was Elias. When he brought us into the big uh, area, he just like, he had one of the barrels come in, had someone bring in one of the barrels. Guy said, take this huge axe and just like, pshew, smashes it all over, and then there's this silver tin, and he's like, smashes it again. <sighs> Revealed to us that inside the barrels there was a little metal casing full of enchanted weaponry, which of course was a surprise to us because we didn't know that those were in there, but you know, we could have been horrible smugglers the whole time. Um, a couple of the guards realized that they had seen the mural back in the town of Andal of us after we saved people at the Port of Moor. How cool is that? And they actually knew who we were, all except for Ura. Ura was the devil-looking guy. I mean, they, they remembered my name. I'm not complaining. 
And so they started to believe us and then decided that, well, the city was sealed off so we could prove our innocence if we can go off and catch this buyer guy, which I think his name was uh, Dillette. So that was looking up for a while when all of a sudden a soldier came in and delivered some disturbing news to Lias that they had just found the body of a young halfling woman with all of her internal organs basically missing. That You know, they're innards for a reason, but that was really, really sad and nasty and it looks like she must have been killed outside of the town and the drainage pipe goes in a spiral towards the middle of town and so um, by what we saw she was killed outside of town and then her body floated into the center of town. And of course so we all assume that it was Myra so things have kind of taken a turn for the grave. Um, they, they trusted us with finding the buyer so we got our weapons, uh, then we headed, we head out uh, to the warehouse where we try and investigate stuff. But there didn't seem to be anything too strange. That is until Kales found a staircase leading up to a door to an office and it was attached to a trap. I open the door and a lantern falls down that was attached to a string that was attached to the door. So as soon as I opened the door, the door swung back and the lantern fell and lit this desk on fire. Uh, so I decided to just be done with it. I walked out the front to see if I could see if I could uh, find any more clues. She ran off to get help or whatever and Sauter and Ura and I started tracking the wagon, the carriage tracks because I mean we couldn't do anything about the fire so might as well do the job that we we're supposed to do and we ended up tracking them to this super great which is weird because how does a, a wagon go through a grate and we and I both tried to pull open the bars I tried to wiggle in between the bars but nothing seemed to be working until we looked on the inside of the bars and discovered that there was some ancient writing we figured out the weird riddle to open it, which is really stupid. All we had to do was say apples. As soon as someone said the word apples, the bars were gone and we could go on through. We were about to make our way down into this awesome sewer. I'm really excited about it. Completely disregarded it until we had Oh, right. So, nope, gotta get to that later. Damn, linear storytelling is hard.